Hi, I'm Tony Bowen. Welcome back to my Corn Country Rails video. Well, this is part six of my Woodland Scenics deep pour that I've been doing. And last month I had just kind of finished up the area on a small creek on the upper deck. Now I'm moving into a larger area on the lower deck of the layout. And so some things that I have been working on is I took a photo um, from this past summer and my daughter uh, got rid of all of the reflection from the sky and that and we just kind of made it kind of a murky color so when I pour the deep pour murky water it would kind of blend in nicely to it and so I made a paper copy of those just to make a tin plate out well since then I've gotten the photograph ones that I thought I could use and I thought oh you know the problem I have is I still need to kind of splice the photo to fill from one side of the bank to the other. Well, while I was getting my photo made, I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna experiment. They had an eight by 20, and I realized there's gonna be a lot of this that I'm not gonna use. But the thing is that I don't have to then splice. So I'll probably start right at this side of the bank and cut all the way across to this side, probably right before it gets to the shaded area is probably where it'll be trimmed off. So I'll lose a big chunk of this murky part at the bottom. I'm not too worried about it because then hopefully the water that I pour will come right up to that level. So I'm gonna start with this uh, to see how it works. Now to help me along with my paper one is I already made a tin plate out of paper a month ago. And so the only advantage that I have on the eight by 20 is that kind of this stretch across here where it's just the murky green where it would be the water is that I actually in that 8 by 20 photo I actually have some foliage that'll draw your eye back and so we'll give it a try let's see what it looks like so one of the things I want to do is use what I already have for existing banks on either side as kind of my perimeters of where I'm going to have water in between them. And so when I made the paper tin plate right here, that's essentially what I did is that it comes off one bank over here, goes into the backdrop and then did the same over here. So my hope is now with the photo that I can lay that right on top of there. But instead of having just this voided area, now I'm going to have some tree line that essentially will go back and maybe lead the eye um, back to the backdrop as, as you look down the river. Oh, and as we're working, we have a Milwaukee train coming through, which is nice to see as well. All right, well, I guess back to it. So I'm going to make my little mark here, take a nice straight edge, and I'm gonna run it all the way to this side. I really don't care if I lose the shadowed area um, of the photo because obviously that becomes a real distraction to the eye. Um, if I have to keep that by any means, that's where I'll probably build up with uh, trees anyway, just like I have trees on that side and I'll just need to be filled in a little so let's see how this, how this looks. All right, so I've drawn a line from left to right on the photo for how much I'm gonna cut off and then in hopes of dropping it back on the backdrop. The other thing that I want to do is a good trick that model railroader Tony Coaster always says is, you know, go up here, cut out your skyline. 
because obviously the blue that I have is not going to match the blue here. So it's better just to go with what I already have. And so I'll just kind of come in the tree work here and cut out some of that blue sky. All right, so I have the photo, and so anything that's gonna be trimmed off is gonna be trimmed off this side because of that shadowed area. So I'm gonna kinda of drop it in and, and see how it looks. All right, well the photo is not horribly bad. Um, there's both some trimming I need to do on both the left side and as I figured on the right side of the bank to bring it right down to the riverbed area. Um, I think it's going to look a whole lot better too once I get some of this dark area trimmed out of there that I don't need and take off those sharp 90 degree corners here and kind of give it some uh, curves in that and obviously when I plant other trees and bushes in there that'll even help with some of that so I think I'm going to do that before I worry about doing the kind of the final cut and fit in. All right, so now I'm gonna to try to get kind of a final fitting of how this will be cutting off from this side because of the dark shadowed area and then trying to blend this in on the uh, left side of the layout. So that's what we'll work on now. All right, so here's what we've got. I trimmed in, so on the left side of the bank, this kind of voided out area here will have trees that will kind of blend from the 3D to the flat backdrop. And over here, just as I kind of anticipated, we've got this dark area here where the bank actually kind of curves around. And so I'm going to keep that and I will just kind of bustle up some trees, probably even higher than the the skyline so when it's all done essentially you'll see from here to here with the trees that are made up of the backdrop and I kind of drew a pencil line it's hard to see where I'm just going to kind of curve this out and uh, then I think I'll be ready to put some glue on it and seal it so when we kind of get down to track level on that I mean it's kind of hard with the obstacles of the highway 6 bridge the railroad bridge but the murky water will basically come from the fascia and go all the way back to the backdrop. So for a print at Walmart that was only like $7.50, um, 
there was a whole lot that I ended up trimming off it by the time I cut out the sky. And then obviously this big portion of water uh, that was not needed. And of course, when this was all taken care of, we also had the shadow of the bridge I was standing on and that. So essentially to me, the uh, $7 and 50 cents or whatever it was for this, um, I think it's gonna work out okay. All right, the other thing I wanna do now is basically paint the backdrop with glue to adhere it. So I'm using that scrap piece of photo and turn my self-healing mat over and I'm just gonna dab the back with some glue just so it's adhered on really well. I don't wanna to get too much right to the top edges so that when I kind of push it towards the backdrop that it oozes up. So I'm kind of going heavy towards the bottom of the riverbed so it seals well. And then uh, after I get that, then I'll just kind of do brush strokes upward. paintbrush of glue on an extra piece of paper while I get that ready to uh, clean out in a little bit. Trying to adhere it to the back as best that I can. Okay. So I'll let the picture dry for about 24 hours and uh, we'll go from there. I think once the water is poured in this area, it's going to look pretty well. It's going to look very nice. I'm happy with it, especially when you get down to that kind of track level. You don't hardly see a lot because of the bridges in that. The other thing that's going to be very important is to make sure that it is all sealed up really well before I get ready to pour the deep pour murky water in it. And so in this case, there's a way we can do that. So please excuse the helicopter shots as we go around the other side of the layout. There's my bicycle, one of my other hobbies. There's a sneak peek at the other deep pour area that I did. But if we come around this side of the layout, right about here and underneath the layout right back there between kind of the masonite and the foam and on the other side of that masonite and foam i'm going to come in here with some tape and i'm going to make sure that is all sealed up really well because um, it's either going to leak from the back the sides or the front and I want to make sure that I have no leaks at all, just like on my last one. And so coating that real well with just some uh, painter's tape, some duct tape, anything like that really helps. Because once it's set up, it won't leak anywhere. Uh, but while it's still in that liquidy state for about the first four hours, um, if there's a hole anywhere where it can escape, um, it certainly will find a spot and it will escape from it. All right. So, good progress. 
Well, thank you again for watching this month's update on my deep pool water area. Um, the backdrop is going to probably have several days to dry because one thing I still need to do is I need to paint the Highway 6 overpass and I would like to paint the railroad bridge. Nice thing is, I already have the paints. So now it's just finding the time to get them painted and taken care of in that. So I hope you will continue to keep watching my progress. And once again, remember, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button on the corner. And if you ever have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. I'm always interested in what you have to say and try to respond back to you in a timely manner. So thank you again for watching. Stay healthy, stay happy, and keep model railroading. Take care for now. Bye-bye.